Hey, hey, Inspired Tribe, my fellow freedom lovers, it's John Nolan here. Thank you so much for tuning in uh, to an inspired live stream and uh, an inspired conversation at the same time. This is sort of an emergency broadcast, if you will. Um, this story is bizarre and uh, the you know large media blackout around it already tells a story. And you might have heard of it by now. Uh, there was a, a tropical storm approaching Mexico, Acapulco, uh, to be specific, a few days ago on Tuesday. And uh, nobody thought much about it, apparently, because the media didn't talk about it. We didn't hear anything, any hype or anything like that. And uh, by 6 p.m. that night, it was still a tropical storm. By 1 a.m., so seven hours later, this tropical storm, Otis, had turned into a full-on Cat 5 plus hurricane. And, you know, the reports are still varying, but we th last we heard, this might have been the second strongest or maybe even strongest hurricane to make landfall. It has decimated Acapulco. It has absolutely surprised the vast majority of the residents. And we're very grateful that two of our team members who live in Acapulco reported yesterday they're, they're, they're bruised and battered, but they are alive and they are safe. And we wanted to get the full gist of the story. So uh, we're bringing someone on today who is a true local, knows the area, has done a lot there. You know the guy, uh, the original <laughs> anarcho-capitalist, Jeff Berwick, the founder of the Dollar Vigilante, and of course, Anarcho Polko. Jeff, thank you so much for joining us today. I really appreciate it. Thank you, John. It's a real pleasure to be on. You're actually one of the first people to contact me about this. Uh, so thank you so much. So, so many people still haven't realized what's happened here. Uh, this is a massive crime and a massive attack and a massive crisis going on in Acapulco. Of course, with the massive crime, a massive attack and massive crisis going on in Gaza, most people uh, probably haven't even noticed. And I totally understand that what's happening in Gaza is the most heinous thing I've ever seen in my lifetime. Uh, and I've seen a lot of heinous things and to watch it live and to watch a lot of people cheering it on is truly heinous. Uh, but we have our own, uh, they're, they're, these uh, globalists, uh, the Great Reset are moving forward as fast as possible. So they're doing that in Gaza, killing so many people in the most horrific fashion. And at the same time, they've and this is can be disputable, but to me, it's not disputable once you understand all the uh, put all the dots together, and maybe I can do that here, that this was actually a, a weather attack. We know weather weapons totally exist. We've actually seen them in so many different ways. Uh, for example, just recently in Maui, we've, we've seen that. Uh, that was using more uh, directed energy weapons. Uh, we've seen it in the California wildfires, which was directed energy weapons. Uh, even going to uh, the uh, hurricane in New Orleans, um, whether that was a actual uh, weather weapon attack with the hurricane itself, I actually haven't gone back and looked into it, but I was just this morning going, I got to go back and look at that one. That one might have been as well, but I do know that it, it's, it looks like very highly likely from what I looked into, and I really haven't, that they uh, destroyed the dams at New Orleans to flood the city that year. So this is something they do quite regularly. Uh, but they're doing it more and more and more brazen and bigger now. So to give people some perspective, because I'm sure some people are like, oh, Jeff, he's crazy. They, there's no way they control the weather and hurricanes. Well, if, if you think that, you just have not looked into it. You're just ignorant to the facts. They've come out and said it. They've, they've been doing it. Uh, but that's the genius of this whole thing is that uh, it's really hard to convince people that this is what's going on. So let me lay out some of the facts and maybe people can put the dots together themselves. As you said, around six o'clock on Tuesday, no one even knew there was a tropical storm. The tropical storms are not a big deal. It's just a big rain, it, rain shower. If it's too much rain, it'll flood. It, but it's not anything that's too, no one's watching tropical storms that much. Uh, six o'clock on Tuesday, uh, all of a sudden, just after that, I heard there was a hurricane uh, and it might be in the area of Acapulco. And I was quite surprised because I generally keep my eyes open because we have a house there. We, well, we had a house there. We had a boat there. Uh, all our friends are there. They have all their stuff there or had all their stuff there. Everything's wiped out. Uh, but uh, so I generally do keep an eye on it. All of our families there. All of our friends are there. And uh, so when I heard it, I just started looking into it. And 
as you probably know, with hurricanes, usually you have a fair amount of time. Usually you can see them coming in one way or another, usually uh, for days or even like close to a week beforehand in some cases. Uh, so I, I didn't rush to do it, but I, I did go look. So I went and looked and, oh yeah, it looks like there is a hurricane. Wow. that And I, I was like, wow, that's really close. And I was like, how did I not notice that? Um, I would have normally noticed that. And I started to go into some groups with uh, whether uh, the guys that really watch this stuff, the, the, that's all they do is watch weather and satellite data and they're really into it. And all I see is them all going, what happened here? How did our models not see this? And they're all going a little like, they're all super confused. And so I'm sitting there watching and all of a sudden, so I, I go in and I start looking into it myself. I go on windy.com, which is actually really great, by the way. It's, it's incredible, the information you can get on there. And I see this thing and, and uh, it starts just ramping up. Uh, it goes from a tropical storm within a couple hours, as I'm watching it, it hit like category four, which, uh, so I go back to the weather guys and they're like, what is going on? This is basically impossible. We've never seen this before. How did we not even notice this? It came out of nowhere. And all of a sudden, so I, I look at the tracking, so people are starting to track, and it's, it just starts heading as fast as possible. Like, I, actually, at speeds, I'd like to see people look into, uh, because um, it, within a couple hours, it was a Category 5, and it hit Acapulco. Uh, so during this time, by the way, so I, so it's Category 4, and, and so I start listening to the weather guys again, like the real ones, not the weather network and all that, like the real good guys on the internet. And um, they go... Oh yeah, this is getting big. This could be like a massive storm. And they go, it looks like it could hit like Acapulco. Like it looks like it's headed right for it, uh, which the chances of that is like very small, obviously. Like they would head, head for like the biggest city in that area, like right to it. And uh, they said, it looks like at the current rate, it's going to hit by uh, five or six in the morning. So this is around nine or, or 10 at night now, but maybe nine o'clock. And so I get on all my groups. I get on every Anarchapoco group. We've had Anarchapoco and Acapoco. This is supposed to be our 10th year anniversary coming up in February. We still might do it, by the way, but we have no idea right now. We have to figure out this crisis first. Uh, the, um, <laughs> I started telling everyone, I, get, I told my wife, I told everyone in our family, here's the funny thing, John, no one believed me. <laughs> like not one, like, I, I don't know if like you probably know me fairly well. I've been so right on so many of these things. I've predicted so much over the last 20 years uh, and I've, I've exposed, I've shown what's going on in so many ways. And, and so I tell everyone in Acapulco, you not only need to uh, pay attention to this, you need to pack up and leave Acapulco right now. And most of the responses I got from most people was, ah, Jeff, it's barely rainy right now. There's no wind. I was like, I know, but there's a, it looks like a, it could be a cat five and it could be by morning, by five or six in the morning. This is around nine. There was only one person who listened to me, uh, one family. Uh, and uh, thankfully they did. Uh, their house got destroyed um, and they have two small kids and they actually live right there. My neighbor in Acapulco, uh, good friends of mine as well. And they actually listened to me. And so I, I was like, get out. Uh, you know, at first they're kind of like, well, yeah, I'm sure it'll be fine. I was like, do not, you, you have two little kids, your house is not that uh, sturdy there. Uh, you need to get out of Acapulco. And, and it took me a couple of minutes, uh, but they finally listened to me. And then they said they had no car. So I had someone who was there drive them my car and they got out just in time. And then here's what's happened is the Cat 5 hurricane hit at between 12 and one in the morning. So this all happened in a span of a couple hours. Uh, most people in Acapulco had already gone to sleep and had no idea there even was a hurricane until 12 or one in the morning when it was 200 mile per hour winds ripping apart all of Acapulco. So at that point, uh, I had actually already gone to sleep. I, I said to myself, I went to sleep around 11. I have a, a, a one year old child now. He wakes me up at five every morning. I said, I'm going to go to sleep. I'm gonna, there's nothing I can do. I've told everyone. I don't know what more I can do. Most people don't believe me. Uh, but, I, you know, what more can I do? I'm exhausted. I'm going to go to sleep and try to wake up around five and see what's going on. And I just hope and pray this thing does not hit Acapulco. So I wake up around five or six and no, nothing. There's no signal from anyone in Acapulco. And that, it lasted that way. It still lasts that way to this day, by the way. 
Uh, but we did not get any, I had to actually send my people down from where we are, which is North of Mexico City, that day, uh, which took about eight out, 10 hours for them to get there. Uh, once they got into Acapulco, they couldn't uh, c communicate with us. There was no communications, no power. Uh, so he had to go in, find out what's going on. And then in the morning, he came out far, far enough to a town called Chilp Chilpanzinga, which is about one hour outside of Acapulco. And uh, he let us know what had happened. So that was on Thur it was the, the event happened on Tuesday evening. We did not know anything until Thursday morning. Uh, on Thursday morning, once I found out what had happened, uh, I immediately jumped into action. Uh, I've got a big team, not only with Anarcapoco, but with the Dollar Vigilante. We put together within about two hours all the fundraising stuff. We put together a website, hurricaneotisrecovery.com. I can go to that right now if you want. It's got all, it's got the GoFundMe, it's got the Give, Send, Go. Uh, it's got every crypto, most of the cryptos, if you want to donate crypto, and it's, it's badly needed, by the way. So this is on Thursday, I just start doing this. Um, and as everyone starts to discover what's going on, everyone jumped into action, all the Anarchapoco team, was on it. We've got a Telegram uh, group chat right now with 30 people in it, and all th there's way more who want to be in it, but those are the 30 people who are basically on the ground or coordinating in the ground on Acapulco, bringing stuff in, because what we discovered is that... Uh, sorry, should I keep going? Or did, did, did yeah, you have yeah, 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 no, 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 keep going, keep going, please. Okay. So let please. Me, I just realized I've been talking for quite a while here. Uh, so... Um, as we discovered what had happened, um, so everyone's looking for their friends and family uh, with Anarchapoco, with there's so many people who live there and there's so many people who know people who live there. Uh, so uh, immediately a number of people, Danny Sessom of Anarchapoco, immediately started driving down from Texas. He actually drove down the day before, even before we knew what had happened, because it looked like, a, no one knew, but it looked like a massive hurricane had hit Acapulco. So he had already started heading down. Uh, if anyone's seen HBO show The Anarchists, which was about Anarchapoco, Henza started driving down. He was in Morelia. Uh, and uh, so we had people already driving there on Wednesday. My people were already there on Wednesday. Uh, once we found out what had happened, we uh, started spraying into action, started raising some funds. And thank you to everyone who's contributed. We've raised, I think, I haven't even looked this morning. It's been chaos. Uh, I've been going just nonstop, uh, but uh, as of last night, over two hundred thousand dollars. So thank you so much. We've already spent probably at least twenty to thirty. Uh, it's been slow. We're getting. We bought Starlinks yesterday, so we can get communications in Acapulco. Uh, we're bringing food in as fast as we can. It's been a little difficult because people are panicking. They for three days, maybe four now. I, I haven't even looked at anything. I just woke up got my camera working and I'm doing this interview right now. So I, I don't even know what's the latest information, but uh, the last I know as of last night is there's no, no help in Acapulco for anyone. And in fact, they were blocking any help from coming in. And that's a whole other topic I can get into. But uh, so for, uh, as far as I know, for about four days now, they've had uh, no power, no signal, which is not the end of the world. No food. Everything got wiped out. Everything in this storm. This this thing, th there's structures still standing. A lot of the structures still exist, but anything that was in them, because every window in Acapulco is broken. Uh, every, like the Walmart is just completely damaged. If there was stuff left, people have already taken it, obviously, because they have no food. They also have no water. And here's another interesting thing, and getting back to connecting the dots on this. There was no rain with this hurricane. We've discovered, if you look at the hurricane, there was uh, a few webcams that were live for, for a short period of time. And, and right on the beach, you can see the, the wind and, and the palm trees. And it looks like rain. That's actually from the storm surge. And the water that you're seeing with the flooding on the ground in a lot of places in Acapulco, that's all from the storm surge. The storm surge was absolutely massive. It wiped out a lot of things itself. But there was absolutely no rain uh, during the entire hurricane. Uh, and so the hurricane hit, of. Stuff we're just finding out now. The hurricane hit 200 plus mile an hour winds, destroyed everything, and it came out of nowhere. A few hours later, it wasn't even a hurricane. And as soon as it had stopped hitting Acapulco, it basically disappeared. And there was no rain. It was completely clear and sunny right after that. Uh, like, for example, in my house, which is very damaged, uh, all the windows are gone. And you can see the furniture is all thrown around inside, all completely dry. So this this is sounds more like a tornado. Turn, I mean, yeah, it's easily... like a giant 20 mile wide 
whatever the worst tornado there is all, on all of Acapulco, like every single house. Um, yeah, that's actually a good point. It, it, it's more like a, it, the, 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 it looks like some of it looks more like a tornado than a hurricane. I hadn't actually realized that yet. So thank you. If We're you, still trying to put the pieces together. If you uh, have no I'm water. Sure. Yeah, go, go ahead. ahead. Go ahead. No, no. I just want to say if you have no hurricanes, they gain their strength by, you know, going through large masses of warm water and obviously picking up that water too. And then when they hit the water usually comes down, but, but if this is a dry hurricane, it defies all the uh, meteorological, you know, knowledge we have because you don't usually have dry hurricanes like that. They come with a lot of rain. They come with a lot of water. Yeah, we know that in Acapulco because we do get some hurricanes. We never get that big of ones because they actually start all the time down near Nicaragua. By the time they pass Acapulco, they're usually quite small. Maybe a Cat One. The worst that's ever hit, I think, was a cat, might have been a Cat 4 or Cat 3, Pauline, in the 1990s. So no one really worries about uh, big hurricanes in Acapulco for that reason. It passes Acapulco and it gains strength, like you said, with all the water. Uh, and by the time it gets up to Puerto Vallarta, Cabo, it can be a massive hurricane, but rarely in Acapulco. So this has defied all, uh, everything we know about hurricanes in every single way, including the speed. Uh, I should point out that the tracking of it was quite incredible. It tracked beelined right for not only Acapulco, but I have to point this out. Uh, you've had Max Egan on as a guest on your show. Max Egan is one of the more outspoken people about weather weapons uh, and uh, against the government in general. And we have a number of those people speak at an Acapulco. I've spoken about it myself. Max actually tracked the exact tracking of the hurricane where it first touched landfall. It was at Max Egan's house. Uh, right behind Max Egan's house is the secret garden where Narcopoco is held. Uh, that is quite a coincidence. And I'm going to tell you right now, I don't believe in coincidences anymore. I'm, I'm done. Uh, people need to realize what is going on. This is a massive. These globalists are doing this all over the world. And they're doing it for a reason. Uh, and what you'll see online is a, almost all the NPCs, all the brainwashed slaves saying, oh, well, this is just global warming. It's going to be bigger storms now. That's exactly their plan. And of course, the dumb and the people who aren't even really human completely fall for it. The people who watch the television programming, they'll just repeat it. This is done to convince those people that it is global warming when they're actually doing it themselves because there actually isn't global warming. It's actually been cooling there. It's been cooling for quite a while now. There is climate change, uh, but it's not caused by man. Uh, and that's caused more by the grand solar minimum, which is going on. And yes, that's going to actually cause a number of weather events. And they know that and they're taking advantage of it. And they're trying to convince the world that all these things are happening because people drive cars and because cows fart. So you have to stop driving your car. Uh, we have to get rid of all meat, eat Z bugs, uh, kill Gates. Bill Gates is already making all of his insect uh, meat for you. Uh, they're always well ahead of these things. Uh, these are all planned well in advance. And uh, they are just basically pushing this stuff uh, and, and, you know, pushing all the carbon taxes. You can't fly anymore. Why? Because, well, look. The weather is getting too bad now. They're actually doing most of these weather events. Uh, some of them definitely are natural, of course. Uh, this one, there's nothing natural about it. And I am done even pussyfooting around this. Uh, if people do not wake up, and I don't even know exactly what they can do. Maybe we can get into that. I actually do have some ideas. But because how do you stop this? This is something when you have the most evil people in the world and they control devices and technology and weapons, that can do things like these weather events that most people won't even recognize as attacks. How do you even defend or stop it? And I actually do have some ideas about that, but just to finish off on this hurricane. Uh, so as of this moment, still, to, as far as I know, unless something has changed overnight, they have no power, very little signal. We're starting to get some signal now. Uh, no food and no water except for what we're bringing in ourselves through our what we've been raising funds at, I'll say it again, hurricaneotisrecovery.com. Uh, we've got all the donation links there. And here's the next thing, John. The, not only has there been, there's a military base in Acapulco. They, they usually drive around with all their guns and stuff all the time because they're bored. Uh, after this happened, they took off. They're gone. Uh, there's no there's no government presence whatsoever. They're gone. Uh, the president said he was going to try to come. Uh, his jeep got stuck in the mud, so he didn't come. Uh, none of our 
cars have gotten stuck in the mud driving from Mexico City to Acapulco, by the way. Actually, the roads are pretty fine because there was no real hurricane. Um, so they and now they just announced yesterday. We already knew this because we've been trying to get in supplies. So we've been raising funds. We've got people going back and forth from outside of Acapulco to get the, the supplies, bring them in. They've had roadblocks set up from the government, and they've been trying to stop anyone from bringing in supplies. So not only are they not helping, they're trying to stop anyone from helping. Now, for what reason I can maybe get into, or maybe just briefly I will. They want to destroy Acapulco. They want all the poor people out of there. This is an attack on a lot of the poor people in Acapulco. Uh, they don't mind breaking all the windows and all the hotels. All the structures are still there. This is going to be fairly easy to recover for people with money. Uh, even my house, it's not going to take that much. I'm going to have to replace the windows, clean up the damage inside, and we're back with the house again. It's not a major issue. The poor people who live in the poor areas, all their houses are gone. Uh, they're making it as dire as possible. They want to get rid of them because Acapulco used to be a place for the rich and the famous. And over the years, it's become a lot of poor people have lived more and more in the areas in the general vicinity of Acapulco. They're trying to get those people out and making it as hard as possible. Uh, we can't even get into some of those poor areas. They've got them blocked off. Th this is a bit of a speculation, my first speculation uh, so far, that uh, we hear screams a lot of times coming from those poor areas, gunshots. Uh, and we think it's quite possibly, and this is total speculation, we don't know. Uh, they're doing like a purge of these poor people in Acapulco right now. They're not allowing any media into Acapulco, by the way. There's been hardly any media coverage of Acapulco this entire week. Uh, we're the only ones doing this. So thank you once again. There's like only a few people doing this. We're the only ones trying to get supplies in. They're trying to stop us. I can't give you exact details how we're getting around them, but I'll tell you, we're using every single resource we can to get around these roadblocks and get these supplies in because people are starting to die. There's people in the hospital starting to die. They don't have any water. There was no rain with this hurricane. Uh, if there was rain, like it'd, it'd normally be raining for days after the hurricane, everyone could just put their jugs outside and get water. No water whatsoever. People are starting to die in Acapulco. So it is pretty dire. Uh, again, hurricaneotisrecovery.com. We can use all the funds we can get. Uh, we're just trying to get out of this crisis stage right now, make sure people get food and water, the basics, uh, then help them to start to try to recover after that. But we're nowhere near even getting out of this crisis stage at this point. Wow, Jeff, um, you really summarized this really, really well. And thank you for giving us a, a detailed update on, on what's happening on the ground. And I just want to really quickly connect a few dots because there are people that will tune in that for them, the, the, the word weather weapons, the words weather weapons are triggering or, you know, hey, you guys are crazy. Let me tell you this. In the 1960s, there was an agreement between the United States and the Soviet Union, a non-attack agreement that they were not going to use weather weapons on each other. This was reported by the Washington Post and the New York Times and whatnot. That was in the 60s. To my knowledge, every piece of legislation in every single country that was aimed at prohibiting using weather weaponry on its own population has always has never gone through. So as far as I know, there is no law in the books that countries can't use weather weather weapons against their own people. So we have, you know, this is a reality. Weather weapons are a reality, and we're seeing this Maui, some of the same hallmarks that Jeff just described in terms of how quickly this all comes in, how weirdly it moves, how it absolutely disadvantage, you know, the disadvantages on the poor people or the the poorer population and the, the help efforts are thwarted. So people basically have two options. They can die or they can leave. And that's what they want. They either want them to die or leave. So Jeff, um, when we talk about this, these funds that you set up again, uh, hurricane Otis uh, who, how are these funds distributed? Just so we have, you know, people want that transparency. If they send money, who's going to do that and how's that going to be distributed? Yeah, well, thanks. Uh, we set this up in a couple of hours. Uh, it's amazing. We've set up basically a full recovery team, a full charity, all these kind of things in a couple of hours. Uh, as you probably know, John, the uh, uh, things like Red Cross. Usually, when things like this happen, everyone in we the don't world... we don't have to talk about. <laughs> we don't have yeah. to talk about the the farce that is Red Cross, the criminal organization that's Red Cross. Yeah, you know, but maybe other people might yeah, not yeah. know. But <laughs> people usually donate like billions of dollars to them. Hardly any of it goes to the uh, thing. It's it's a complete, almost complete scam. Same with all like the Clinton Foundation, all these things. So remember with Oprah, with the Maui, 
complete scam. Like they're just taking people's money and ripping people off. Uh, so I, I knew that's the case. So as soon as we launched it, we said, we're going to post every receipt for everything. We, we're going to show, we're going to have videos and photos. We, we do actually, you can go to hurricaneotisrecovery.com. We've started putting them up. It's been hard to get a lot out of Acapulco because we have no internet there. We're getting Starlink in today. We've got two coming in today. Uh, but uh, we're posting every thing we're buying and every receipt on the website and showing as we distributed it. So this is night and day to like Red Cross, where you send money, they steal it all, and they don't do anything. Here, if you send money, you will actually see people buying stuff with it a few hours later, and you'll see it being distributed a few hours after that. It's like direct, instant instant karma, actually. Good karma for you, because you'll, you'll, you'll donate, who knows, $20, whatever you can afford, $20. You know, three hours later, you'd be like, hey, there, there goes a big pack of uh, bottled water. That's probably what I bought for them. And you'll see people like, thank you, thank you, that sort of stuff. And that's what's going on. So, yeah, th that we're, we're, we plan to uh, actually put full accounting. We've got our, that's a bit, you know, we're, we're not focused on that at the moment. Of course. We're focused on getting it out, but I actually have guys already working on it. So we should have accounting starting showing up right away. You'll see every penny where it's going. Uh, and, uh, you know, we have a few hundred thousand dollars. I, I, I should say that's probably going to last us at least a couple of days at this point. Um, but uh, we can use a lot more. Uh, the reason I say it'll last us a couple of days, we still don't have all the trucks in place. We just bought some mo motorcycles. We're still we need chainsaws so we can get through to a lot of places. Uh, so it might be one or two more days before we need more funds to help out more people uh, because we just can't get through to those areas right now. We don't have the infrastructure set up. We don't have all the trucks there. A bunch of our trucks have already broken down flat tires because of all the, the, the stuff on the road and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but once we get our uh, operations fully operational, uh, we can use basically as much money as people can afford because especially until some someone else helps bring in food and water and power into Acapulco. And as of right now, as far as I know, that has not happened. And if this goes on even another day or two, this is going to turn into, I don't even know how, there's a river in Acapulco. I guess they should be able to go there. I, people are probably gonna be sick though from the river. Uh, that's probably not the cleanest water. They probably don't have all the filters and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but, you know, a lot of people don't live near that river as well. I'm just like thinking off the top of my head here right now. There's going to be a lot of people dying very soon if we can't get in at least water to them. Uh, what we've also found out, by the way, is as we're on day four of no food or water. Uh, people are starting to panic. And we've heard of uh, people trying to like basically when they see people coming in with any supplies, like for the family or whatever, they're getting like mobbed and, and their stuff taken. These are people in panic. You would do the exact same thing. I'm pretty sure I'm I, I might not. And I'll just say one reason, because I understand that uh, doing a, a five day fast with no food is no problem. And it's actually super healthy for you. Unfortunately, most of these people do not know that. So they're on day three or four with no food and they think they're going to die. So they're starting to panic. Uh, if they've had no water, they will die soon. I don't know how long you can go without water, but it's probably not too long. I would just guess five or 10 days. Um, some people might say less, but I think I, I know people have done dry fast for longer than like five days. So uh, you can do it, but the people are panicking. So we're starting to set up, uh, get all our team's machetes uh, to defend themselves from mobs. So we can try, we're trying to get up like a soup kitchen set up like almost in every neighborhood. Uh, and have people defending it at the at the start until people can see. Listen, this food's going to be here. It's coming in. If you just get in the line, you're going to get some in like the next hour or so. Don't attack and mob it, or no one's getting anything. Uh, and we're going to be here for a while. We're we're going to be here for as long as it takes. So no one needs to panic. And once they get food and water, the whole situation will become much less uh, uh, dire. Uh, but we're not at that stage yet. Well, J Jeff, we want to focus on that now. Um, also, I know you 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 have to uh, you have to attend to your event uh, pretty soon here, but we want to focus on the on the immediate help that is needed. Apparently, first responders and the government at large are uh, not doing much. I mean, you could if if that if roads are really a problem, you could send in a ship as fast as this. You could send in a ship to Acapulco, and and the problem would be solved. Or two ships with uh, lots of supplies. The government could do that. Uh, you know, that would, wouldn't be a problem, but they're obviously not. Are you getting any help from first responders, law enforcement, or any other government agency at all, even just coordination support, Jeff? No, there's no one there. We're the only people doing this. Uh, the only people there are the military stopping aid from coming into Acapulco. This is all planned. 
This is all by design. This is what they want to happen, and we need to expose them. Uh, the this is sort of what we heard out of Maui as well, right? Uh, the, the the police all were trying to get people into the area where they'd be burned alive and, and keep them there. Uh, this is the exact same sort of situation. Um, so yeah, there's there's nothing like that as far as getting in. Uh, we I, I didn't say how we're getting in supplies because I don't want them to know because they're watching this. They don't they don't want us there helping. Uh, they're trying to stop us in every way. They want this to be uh, a perfect operation where all the poor people, most people. Uh, are run out of Acapulco. There'll be just nothing left for them there anyway. Uh, they'll have no food and water, so they'll be so desperate, they'll all just have to go. And, you know, it's up to people what they want to do after this. Like a lot of these people, you know, maybe they maybe they should go somewhere else, um, but they should have an option and they should have food and water in the meantime to make a choice and not be forced by violence and by a, a criminal attack. When you think about this, like how many criminal acts are this big? where you attack about a million people, destroy everything they have in about an hour, uh, kill a lot of them. The deaths, we're still not sure. There's definitely bodies on the street in certain areas. No one's picking them up, by the way. There's going to be a lot of health issues coming next. Um, but destroying an entire city, uh, destroying everything that everyone owns in that city, uh, killing a lot of people in about an hour. Like This is about the, uh, the same effect as a nuclear bomb would be if nuclear bombs exist. Uh, but it's it's like a nuclear bomb was dropped on Acapulco and no one is helping and we're trying to help and they're trying to stop us. So please spread this, uh, share this uh, video, share this information with everyone. Uh, the more that we can expose them, uh, the less chance they can keep it up. Uh, but yes, we're trying to bring it in from every way we've looked at uh, through the ocean. I, I won't even say because they'll they'll find out and they'll try to stop us. Okay, um, let's not talk about that then. Um, what, I, let's I'm, say that we're bringing it in. Every, we don't care how much they try to stop us. We Even if they try to stop us or they try to kill us, we're not stopping. And we might get to the point where we start fighting back against them because we are not allowing them to do this crime. Jeff, um, I want to thank you so much. Really, we want to focus right now, focus on, on this uh, recovery effort and the help effort. Uh, HurricaneOtisRecovery.com. Multiple fundraisers on there. As you said, GoFundMe, Gibson, Go Crypto. So you can do and and as you know, as Jeff said, their team will go out and distribute this ASAP. This is the first thing we will continue to um, try to get all the information on how it happened, what happened. That's step two. But step one is to help the people. Also, for everybody watching, it should be clear by now that you need some sort of preparedness. I just want to bring this up because right now is a good moment for people. If you need a bug out bag and you need some food and water for a certain period of time. Uh, from what I'm hearing right now, our team members, for whatever reason, I believe didn't have that or not sufficiently. And I'm almost a little surprised because they should know better. Um, you know what happened, John, is that a lot of people did have stuff like that. It, the, the interiors of every house, every window broke, 200 mile per hour winds, everything just is gone. True, That's true. It's unimaginable. I'm, where, so where I'm sitting, where I'm sitting. Make sure you put it in a place that is like, really secure in a concrete sort of area high up so it doesn't get flooded stuff like that and i just wanted uh, to say something which i forgot earlier i'm sitting right now uh, in the panhandle gulf of mexico and this is an area that got heavily hit by hurricane michael five years ago people around here are very aware they know about every storm nothing we had zero zero uh, uh coverage of this until after the fact this tells you everything you know how they love to spread out these hurricane stories. You know how they love to push the fear. So this was, in my view, this this sounds like the perfect attack. Uh, Jeff, thank you so much for coming on. I know have, you have a lot on your plate. Once again, hurricaneotisrecovery.com. If you can, please support Jeff and his team. Um, we would love, Jeff, for, for you to keep us in the loop if you can come back on in the next days or whenever it's good for you. Um, to learn what is happening and how things are going. And we'll support this in any way, shape, or form we can. Also, if you can't contribute right now on Spiretrack, please share this. Uh, let's make other media organizations, journalists, podcasters aware, and they can share this too. They can look into this too. And maybe uh, Jeff will have some time to go on other shows, which I think they're going to reach out now and want you to speak to that so we can reach a broader audience and get the massive help that is needed underway. 
Jeff, uh, thank you so much for tuning in. I really appreciate it. And um, yeah, whenever you are ready, please come back on. We'd love to have you. Great, thank you. Are, are we not on on stream anymore? Or? We are. We're still on there. It seemed like you it turned it off. So I can say a, a little bit here at the end. Yes, please. Yes, please. Oh, the stage is yours. Yeah. Thank you so much, John. Uh, the uh, no one is really. There's been a couple of people have reached out to me. You're one of the main ones that did. Uh, most people don't even know what's going on. So thank you so much. It, it's so important that people get this information out there. I did mention there are ways to fix these problems in the future. Uh, but I, we don't have time to go into that. Watch my videos. If you don't know about my videos, go to vigilante.tv. I put out a video with my dog, Lucy, like numerous times per week. Uh, and uh, you can also see it on Twitter at, at dollarvigilante, uh, just at dollarvigilante. Uh, I, I talk about these solutions all the time. I've actually been talking about them for years. Um, and really the end solution actually, and you know, we're on the Inspired channel here, is that people need to realize we're in a essentially a simulation, a video game, a dream, a a, a not level one reality, uh, which any religious person will tell you as well. And uh, and you need to do the work and the self work and go inside and uh, realize who and what you are. Realize you actually are actually creating the world with your own mind in many ways. Uh, and that is actually the full solution to all of this stuff. And as more and more people do that kind of work, which uh, Jean talks a lot about here on the Inspired channel, uh, they're going to turn into beacons of light on this earth and actually transform this earth. Um, so uh, if you're wondering what you can do out there, uh, help if you can donate for what's going on in Acapulco. Uh, and make sure every day you're doing the work. And actually, I'm just about to go off and do a full day's event, <laughs> which we had already set up before this week. My wife's like, how are you doing a, a full day event right as this is all going on and you're managing the recovery? And it's like, you know, we couldn't change it at the last minute. There's so many people on this event. Uh, and it's about changing yourself, by the way. So it, you can go to dollarvigilante.com slash game changers. It's starting in 20 minutes. I'm going to be on there all day. I'm also going to be overseeing the recovery all day. Uh, but yeah, it's it's all about uh, doing the work on yourself uh, uh, in so many ways. I talk a lot about that. Of, of course, John talks a lot about that. Uh, and that's how we really change the world. So uh, just know that and, and, and make sure you're doing that work every day. I personally do it through hours of meditation per day. That's actually how I've been able to do this all week. Uh, no problem, because I'm actually doing like this self-work, including physical, I take care of my health, my diet, all these kind of things, uh, meditation every day, prayer every day. Um, and because of that, I can basically do almost anything. You almost become like a superhuman, which we'll be talking about in my event starting in like 20 minutes. Uh, so thank you so much, uh, John. Like the real thank you. Uh, I've got so many friends who are like media people. Uh, no one's really reached out to me to talk to me. Like I think people still don't realize what's happened. Uh, I think uh, everything going on in Gaza, everyone's focused over there. Uh, they're like, oh, I, you know, I heard a hurricane hit Acapulco. That's where Jeff and Acapulco is. We know them. We're friends with them. But hey, you know, we got to cover this Gaza stuff and all that, which I don't really even blame them. But uh, you, I guess probably because you have people there in Acapulco, you realize the severity of the situation. So thank you for reaching out and thank you for everyone for sharing and donating. Oh, thank you, brother. Uh, your words were beautiful. I mean, just a, a perfect uh, closing for this. And crisis is usually the greatest opportunity for change. So that's why I think, especially today, your event will be even more impactful as you are navigating these two very, <laughs> you know, very polar sides here. So thank you, brother Jeff. Appreciate you very much. Your efforts, hurricaneotisrecovery.com and the share button, friends. This is the call to action. Two things. If you can donate, second thing, please share this uh, Inspire Tribe. We love you. We appreciate you. You know, we'll be back with you again very, very soon. And Jeff, thank you again. Much love, brother. Thank you.